In today's video, I'm going to show you seven hidden, non-obvious reasons why men breadcrumb, ignore, and fail to prioritize women even when they're beautiful, smart, and a great catch. And if this is happening to you, I'm going to share one simple thing you can do starting today to ensure men don't ever take you for granted again. There's something incredibly frustrating and saddening, grief producing about being in a situation or a relationship where you're being breadcrumbed, nor taken for granted. Maybe you catch yourself feeling consistently like you're more into him than he's into you. Maybe you catch yourself being the one who's pushing for more, pushing for more emotional connection, pushing for conversations, pushing to see each other, and that starts bothering you and getting under your skin. Maybe you catch yourself being the one who texts, the one who calls, the one who always initiates because you know in your heart of hearts that if you stop doing it, that he probably would not connect with you the same way you connect, so you'd see him a lot less. Maybe you're with a guy who prioritizes a lot of people and things in his life, but not you. He has time for his friends, time for work, time for the gym, time for a bunch of things. But when he comes down to spending time with you, it almost feels like he's doing you a favor. And it's not all the time, obviously, but that you go through spurts of this hot and cold dynamic that feels so weakening inside. Maybe you are at the space in the relationship where things are not evolving. There's 15 more levels that you could go into from if you're not exclusive exclusivity, if you're exclusive, a deeper level of commitment, maybe an engagement or later a marriage or a family. And you just know that things are not moving forward. And he seems to be pretty comfortable with that. And it's eating you up inside. If any of those things are happening to you right now, I'm here to say that first, my heart goes out to you. You are not alone. You're not the only human being who's going through this. And at the same time, there are hidden reasons that I'll be discussing today that are making this without you knowing much worse for yourself. So what I want to do is through shining a big, bright, bold light that might even feel slightly uncomfortable at first, waking you up to the reality that you can actually change this. The first reason why men stop prioritizing women, if you're a woman who secretly, quietly believes in the Jerry Maguire myth, remember that sappy movie from many years ago, the scene where somebody's saying, you complete me? That way of thinking, you might say, well, I don't think that. But if you really dig deep down, if you kind of feel like a human being is going to complete you, if you feel like there's this void that will only be filled by a guy, then what tends to happen is you prioritize an illusion, a fantasy, something that you really want to have happen, even if it's not happening with a guy in question. And you tend to give him hall passes. Why? Because if this is a guy who's going to brighten your dark cloud, then you might be a lot more lenient on his behavior, on the way he's showing up, because failure to do so means that you're going to have a cloudy year if you don't connect with them. That the shifting of this starts in first a recognition that there's no human being alive on this planet that's going to fill the void of your existence. He can add more greatness to something that already is sustainable. But if you're not right now connecting to a part of you that feels intensely alive, if you don't feel in love with your life, the notion that someone's going to fall in love with you and change things around is a myth because at best it's going to create a dependency that you'll feel addicted to. The second reason why men breadcrumb and take for granted women who are amazing is because at some level you might believe that caretaking is the same thing as loving and nothing could be further from the truth. Taking care of someone that's not your child is not something that you ever have to do. But if you grew up in an environment where through the trauma of your childhood, through the painful experience of connection with adults in your life, you have to take care of their emotional needs then you might be in this loop of taking care of men. And you think in your kind heart that your empathy and your connection and your understanding and you doing things for him he should be doing for himself is equivalent to being loving. When in reality, it's creating a prime situation where you'll be a doormat for the rest of your life. The third reason, similar to the second one, but with a slight difference, why men take advantage of women emotionally, why men breadcrumb women, why men don't fully value them is because you believe in some ways that giving more will make up for his deficiencies in such a way that if he's failing at something, he's not showing up 
with carriage is that showing up consistency and you give more, then not only will that kind of like complete the balance of that uneven equation, but also he's going to kind of see what he's missing out on. He's going to wake up to the reality that you're an amazing woman because you give so much. Guess what happens when you give something to someone who hasn't really earned it, especially a guy, he starts taking it for granted. So when you start giving and there's a secret agenda behind your giving, which is you want him to see you and to value you and to notice you and to love you and you want to love him for the both of you at times, that creates a dynamic where you're training him to the value. You're training him without wanting to for him to think less of you. Even though it's in your mind, you're giving him what he needs. What he needs is to recognize that it's a two-way street. That he needs to give in the relationship if he wants to continue receiving this amazingness that you can break the table. The fourth reason why men breadcrumb women consistently, disregard them and they prioritize them is because you might be afraid of speaking up. You feel like if you speak up, if you bring up things that are not working, if you share what your vision is for the relationship, that you're going to make him run away. When you're in this disempowering lack mentality, you avoid expressing your needs. And when you avoid expressing your needs, guess what happens? Well, he's not going to give you what you want because he's not a mind reader. Plus, it's much more comfortable not to do something that's maybe out of his way to get your needs met. So speaking up and sharing what's in your world, even if you're scared, even if you think that bringing something that's really important to you might scare him away, the alternative to that is never bringing it up and then you feeling at some point that you can't stay in the relationship anymore and him recognizing throughout this time that he can get away with it. Now, before I share my last three points, which are crucial if you want to flip this around, if you're a single woman watching this, I'd be willing to bet that you're not aware of the root cause why you're still single. So what I've done is I've taken 13 years of helping women in every walk of life, every kind of love challenge you can think of, helping those women go from being without a relationship or in painful relationships or situationships to actually getting life commitment from a guy. And I've put together the learnings of all those experiences into a quiz you can take in about 60 seconds. And if you do that, it will reveal to you the number one reason you're still single. If you want to participate, all you have to do is go to the first link in the description. You will see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions. And within 60 seconds, you'll have two things. The answer to the question, why you're still single, and a custom report based on your unique blind spot that will shine light on what's the one thing you can do starting today to attract the guy you want in a tiny fraction of the time. Fifth reason why men devalue women is if you're afraid of being alone, then there are so many different things that you'll look away from that you won't bring to the table things that you'll keep to yourself. Why? Because at the end of the day, if you bring those things and this man is not in your life anymore, you are alone. If your fear of being alone is stronger than your need for truth and your need for expressiveness, that your need for egalitarian equality in a relationship, then what's going to happen is the fear of being alone will keep you from setting boundaries, will keep you from asking for what you want, will keep you from sharing things that will be life-changing in the life of the relationship. The sixth reason why men tend to deprioritize awesome women is if you don't state your needs directly. And what does that mean? That means that you have an indirect way of asking for what you want. You may be upset and instead of saying, I am upset and here's what's going on, here's what's bothering me, here are the feelings I have, you maybe pout a little too much or maybe you distance yourself from him and you try to play a game where the wrath of your disdain should hit him in the belly and maybe teach him a lesson. First of all, if you're with a guy who is not even prioritizing you that much, he may not even realize it's happening. And if he realizes, it may not be painful enough for him to change it, or it may be confusing for him. So being direct, being short and sweet and direct in terms of the things that are important to your heart, including the vision for what you want, is crucial in you being able to get the fulfillment, the commitment, and the value that a guy is presenting to you. The seventh reason, and the last one I'll share today, is because at some level, he lights your world up more than you light your own life up. And here's what that means. If the guy creates an experience of you, and it's not that he's doing it, but you interpret that he's doing it, where he adds more pizzazz and more energy and more aliveness and more passion in your life and what you can create on your own, if you can't create a life that's really fulfilling on your own, then the disparity between the boredom or the lack of excitement in your life relative to what he brings to the table 
will make you eventually a doormat, will make you dim your light, will make you give him, as I said earlier, whole past after whole past. What needs to happen if you want to create a shift in this area of your life is you need to make two decisions. The first decision is that this is going to be painful to change. I'm not here to lie to you. It's not going to be easy. If you're in this dynamic right now, it's not easy, but it's doable. So the first decision is that you would rather risk not having this human being in your life, but go for what you really want that die every single day, moment by moment through lowering your worth and through not experiencing the depth of connection and the reciprocity that a relationship needs to have to be able to grow. The second decision is that you're going to go back to this video and you're going to test one little thing each day in the context of the situation or this relationship that's going to allow you to start shifting this. It's going to be impossible for this to change overnight, but it's very possible for you to say, well, if let's say, for example, you're afraid of speaking up, then you'll say one thing, maybe not the hardest one, but one thing that's bothering you and you'll test it with that. Maybe you're afraid of being alone. You're going to take one full day to just be with yourself and do something that really makes you feel connected to your heart. If he lights you up more than you light up your own wall, maybe you'll take some time to do a different activity that makes you feel incredibly passionate. You'll go through the list of items in this video and you'll do one small action consistently so that you can start rewiring the way you look at things and eventually get to a place where it's not that it's easier, it's that you got stronger to be able to change this. Hope this is helpful, useful, insightful. If it is, it means the world to me and my channel. If you click like and subscribe, because this is how I can grow and reach more women who need help. And if you'd like to continue learning how you can attract the guy you want without the need for gimmicks, manipulation games, or stupid techniques, make sure to watch the next video right here.